and action. Hey guys, this is Jeff, and today we're cooking chicken roulade sous vide. So what's sous vide? Uh, for those of you who are new to it, it's essentially cooking under vacuum, submerged in water. Don't make faces, <laughs> that is not very funny. Submerged in water, so essentially using a Ziploc bag or a vacuum seal bag, you put your usually proteins in it and zip it up and submerge it under water and set it for the exact temperature. The biggest benefit of sous vide, of course, is the precise nature of it. So you set the temperature of the water to the exact temperature you want your protein to finish at, and it does it perfect every single time. And all you need to do is sear it off afterwards. If you're cooking for uh, large groups, you can cook a bunch of stuff, and all you need to do is do the searing part. At the end of it, it takes a few minutes and you're ready to go, no stress, no pressure. So if you're new to it and you've been thinking about getting it into it or you, you know nothing at all about it, and get your life together and get one, watch this video, you'll see how easy it is. Okay, let's get into it. So what we're cooking today is a chicken roulade, and we're cooking it with some mushrooms and peas and a little cheesy-ish, creamy sauce kind of thing. First thing we need to do is get our water on for sous vide. Okay, so we just want to fill this with some warm water. Warm so the circulator works less hard to get it to temp, I guess. We just need to fill it up kind of to about this height so I can sit the circulator in there and the part that kind of heats and circulates the water is uh, well submerged. There, like that. And just screw this into the side of the pot. Screw it in. No. Screw it in. Get it in there. Plug it in. Uh, we need the temperature of our water at 64 degrees Celsius. Through experience, I find that to be the best finishing temperature, uh, bearing in mind that we need to see the chicken off afterwards, so uh, the internal temperature will come up a couple of degrees. The, what are those people that set the rules for what we need to cook shit at? The chicken people or the... Thermostations. Whoever, the fuck, whoever it is that suggests that we need to cook to a certain doneness, chicken is supposed to be 71 degrees Celsius. I prefer 69. 69. Um, and to get to that, uh, finishing at 64, I kind of find with carryover cooking and resting and blah, 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 we kind of ended up, end up getting to that. So 64 is my temperature. That's what we're setting it at today. Right, so we can see that the temperature of the water is currently 48.6 degrees. We want it to be 64. You just change the change the temperature with the dial like that here. And now that starts to heat the water and starts to circulate the water. Simple. Okay, let's prepare the chicken. Okay, so we've got our chicken breast here. What we need to do first is butterfly it out. So we want to get on the side here and kind of cut into, you can see you've got this rounded edge and a long edge. We want to cut into the long edge so you've got a long, I guess, join once you butterfly it out. So we'll just slice through here like that. And just kind of open that up like a book. Gently, gently. There we go, beautiful. I'm going to grab some clean film and just pop the chicken breast onto there like that. And what we need to do is pound it uh, reasonably thin and, and even, so just have a bash. So you can see there we've got one, one very even and a nice surface area, I guess, of, of chicken that we're going to eventually stuff. So I'll just repeat that 
uh, with two more that I've got here for today. Um, Let me see that knife go in. Like that. It's looking very, uh. <laughs> hmm? <laughs> What's wrong with you? Looking very vagine. <laughs> it doesn't look anything like vagine. <laughs> you freak. <laughs> slicey, the slicey. Slice in. And then you turn it into. Please. I've always. I've got this fear that when I do it on. Camera, I'm just gonna screw oh, it up. Oh, you've really given it oh, that one. <laughs> you've really given it up. Okay, okay, so that one. <laughs> Stop it. Okay. Alright, so season with a little bit of salt. Not too much because we're gonna use prosciutto, some cracked black pepper. Beautiful. Some prosciutto. Struggling, but anyway, that's fine. There we go. So, uh, rummaging around the shelves at Audi, Who the, was? the lovely Yazo, I was getting there. Oh, fuck. Far out. Came, found this cream cheese, which is a revelation. This stuff is awesome. I also found, and I found this one. I Thank saw you. that a, flavor, but I thought. Not as versatile. A herbed version, which mm. I'm not going to use today because I'll go with what we know. But beautiful cream cheese. I've got some left over in this one. So what we need to do is pile some cream cheese on here. Not the easiest thing in the world to do, but... Why wouldn't you put the cream cheese on the chicken breast rather than on the prosciutto? Uh, you could. But I like to season the chicken breast itself, um, so that's why I do that. And I'm digging the knife back into the cream cheese because I'm going to use it all so there's no cross contam. There we go, awesome. Um, some spinach. Oh, so you don't need a lot of cream cheese. No, not heaps, no. Mm. Um, some spinach. Spinach. And you load that up because when you twirl it, it get, like it gives a nice look to the ruler, right? Uh, yes. Yes, it does. It does. We'll just roll this guy up and kind of pull and tuck. Just like that. We'll pop this one aside for a tick and we'll come back to that. Touch of salt. For people that don't have a sous vide, is um, there a boiling method? Or like a... No, no, not really. You can put on a low simmer or... You can, but it's so difficult. Too risky. I, I wouldn't, I wouldn't re recommend it. What about oven? Because you've got to manage it. You can do it with an oven for sure. You can tie it up. Um, but this way, the chicken kind of sticks together. It like co kind of coheres. Coheres, is that a word? Is that a thing? Right, You're the wordsmith, Jeff. All this cream cheese. One spread with the other. There we go. Good one. Make a cheesy version, put a slice of cheese in it. Cheddar. Some spinach. And we'll roll this guy up. Just like that. Okay, so we've got our chicken on a piece of cling film. And what we want to do is just go over like that. Make it nice and flat. And roll this up. Just like that. And then squeeze out all of the air from the side. And essentially just roll and roll and roll, making sure that we get I've got a bit of air in there, so I need to squeeze that out. There we go. Roll, roll, 
roll, roll, roll. And what you end up is this perfect cylinder shape, a perfect little sausage. And at the end, after we've seared it off, when we slice it through, you get perfectly round, uh, pretty little wheels of chicken, which we'll see soon. Be patient, and we haven't cooked it yet. Okay, uh, repeat this with all three. Okay, so now we need to back this guy. So we're just gonna put it in a vacuum seal bag. If you don't have one of these, you can use a Ziploc and just uh, zip it up and drop it in the water little bit by little bit. And basically what happens is the water displaces all of the air out of it. That also works. I prefer this one. Um, I have this uh, vac machine, got it from Audi for cheap as. Uh, not the greatest one in the world, but it works fine. So, pop it there. And vac and seal. All done. Basically drop these guys in. One, two. pesky one that wants to float so I'm just going to tuck that down under there like that and just leave that wooden spoon like that and that will essentially hold it under the water so two hours um, 64 degrees Celsius we'll cook the roulades through I'm going to grab a drink and then we'll crack on with the sides okay finally dice one onion Okay, we're out at the side burner on my Weber Genesis. Uh, heat on. Some olive oil in. Some onions in. A couple of cloves of garlic in. that 30 seconds or so till it starts to become fragrant. Good. Uh, mushrooms in. I think I've got about three cups worth here, give or take. Something like that. And we want to just start to saute those down as well. I'm going to season with pepper. Uh, not salt yet because we're adding chicken stock shortly and I never know um, how salty they're going to be, so I like to leave the salt to the end in case I over salt it. Bit of pepper, I like pepper. If you've watched my videos, you know I love pepper. Lovely. Lovely. That's what you needed. Jeff serenading you. Awesome. I can play drums, I cannot sing. Just ask my band. There we go. Okay. That smells good. Okay, so now some chicken stock in. I've got no idea how much to be honest. Um, I've got 500 ml here, but we'll see as we go. Yeah, 500 ml. That's good. Beautiful. So we need to bring that back up to the boil. And we need 
to add uh, one teaspoon of Dijon mustard and a solid amount of that cream cheese that we had before. Um, you could also use some uh, heavy cream or cooking cream or whatever. Um, you could also use white wine in here, but I'm giving it to the kids tonight, so I won't do that. Um, and stir that through. And then we need to add some peas. And I'll put the amount in the description below because I kind of just eyeball it. And I reckon, nothing about that much. How much is that? Half a bag? That's about 500 pounds. It's about half a bag. Okay. Stir those through. And then basically what we need to do is bring that up to a boil. Um, and then simmer until the sauce is nice and... Uh, not stodgy thick, but you know it's kind of it's it's saucy and liquidy, um, but it's but it's reduced down a little bit. Yeah, we'll show you. So we're starting to get there now. You can see that sauce has thickened a little bit. One thing I like to do is just get a potato masher and just not too much, but get a little a little bit of mushiness out of some of the peas which helps to kind of thicken the sauce and make it a little bit kind of, you know, kind of not stodgy, but, you know, more together, I guess. All right, that's definitely done. We're gonna set that aside until we're ready for it. Alright, so we've been two hours, we're going to get these guys out of here now. Okay, so we just want to dry these off. And at this point, these are fully cooked. They clearly don't look that great. But what we need to do now is sear them off in the barbecue or in your, on your uh, hot plate or whatever it is that you're using. And that will give them the nice golden finish that we're looking for on the outside, as well as them being cooked in on the inside. Okay, I got the barbecue up to 250 odd degrees. Um, nice and hot. A little bit of oil. And we want to get these on here for about oh, a couple minutes. Um, we just want to make sure they're nice and golden brown all over. Don't take very long to Okay, let's see how we did. Yum. Perfection. Look at the cheese.
Thanks for watching, guys. Uh, really hope you enjoyed the video. If you liked it, please like and subscribe. Subscribing strokes my ego, makes me feel important and shit. And we'll see you on the next one. Thank you.